All right, welcome back to part two of the nil basis. So we've got a nil potent operator and we're trying to show that there exists a basis with these properties. That's what we're calling the nil basis. And we're doing this by induction on the dimension. And our inductive hypothesis is that we have a basis called star V right here for the range of N and that these are optimal exponents. So if we go one more N, then we kill everything in sight. And now we're going to take uh, a new basis of U's uh, obtained by backing these things up. So in other words, each one of these VKs is in the range of N. So we can look backward to find a UK um, whose image is VK. And so that's what we'll take to be our star U basis like this. And so the name of the game at this point is to prove that the star U, sorry, I just called it a basis to prove that this list uh, star u is linearly independent. I think in the last video I called it a basis as well. Sorry about that. All right, so, so let's make some observations about just kind of the structure that's going on here. So the first thing is that because of this definition, nu equals v, um, that's telling us that uh, these guys are the same, for example, right? And these guys are the same and blah, blah, blah. These guys are the same. These guys are the same. And these guys are the same, 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 all the way through there as well, right? Okay, so what does that tell us? That tells us that uh, star u base, uh, the star u list is equal to star v. And then we just have to add in these missing u's, right? So union u1 up through un. All right, um, but then at the same time, let's get rid of all the green junk. Um, if I apply N to one of these things, then um, uh, this NU1 is gonna get mapped under N to NV1 because when I apply N to it, it'll look like N squared U1 and n squared u1 is nv1. Maybe I should have started here. When I apply n to this guy, I get that guy. There we go. n of u1 is equal to v1, right? Okay. So if I look at how things go under this uh, this map, these guys all identify with each other. This guy gets killed, right? Uh, and same thing here. That goes to this, this goes to this, blah, blah, blah. This goes to this. This guy is dead. Um, and so then that tells us that uh, star V is N of star U. All right, so that's sort of like the, the set way of looking at this defining relation for the U case. Okay, so that's how these sets are related to each other. So let's like delve in here. Okay, so we wanna, we wanna show independence. So in order to show independence, um, we're going to suppose some linear combination of star u is zero. Okay, so what does that look like? It looks like a dang mess because we have to use a doubly indexed sequence. So we're gonna have a sub one comma m one for the m one power of n applied to u one. And so then we've got all of the decreasing powers of n. And so this is all for u1. So the first subscript on my uh, coefficient is one. And then the power of n that I'm applying, so first power, so n u1. And then I've got a10 for the zeroth power of n, which is the identity applied to u1. Okay. So that's all those. So each of these with the uh, first first index of one right there. This is this is all the the U one gang, right? Uh, the tranche of U one. Okay, and so this carries on, and then down at the end we have a n m n capital n to the m n u n. See some name here. Oh. And I just realized I'm listing these, but I shouldn't be. I should be adding these because this is supposed to be a linear combination for God's sakes. Okay, so these are added together. We'll, we'll get there, hang on. 
Um, <laughs> plus, 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 plus. Um, and then we add up all the ones down here at the end, and we get to a n one big n u n plus a uh, n zero u n equals zero. Okay, so there's our dependence relation. Whew! Good grief. Um, uh, and then just I guess for symmetry, so this is all for the u n tranche. And so now the, the first thing that we see um, from these relations over here on the side is that if I apply n to this entire stinking uh, um, linear combination here, then what's going to happen? Well, I guess the first thing to notice is that um, n is going to... Uh, kill off these guys because that's going to take it um, uh, over the top right so oh and I just realized I, I, I didn't include enough things that should be that should have started in an m1 plus one and mn plus one mn plus one oh god even worse okay so I just added the plus ones here 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 and here because that's where this one starts. Okay, and I noticed that because this one here, when it gets hit by N, goes off to die. And that's what exactly what I'm talking about right here. And same thing with this one. When this guy gets hit, it becomes uh, N to the MN plus one applied to VN, which dies. So let's see, death, death, and death. Okay. Um, and so then what's left uh, behind? So what's left behind is uh, A1, M1, and M1, U1 plus A, N, M, N, capital N to the M, N, U, N equals zero. Okay, so I'm, I'm not gonna put in all the intermediate terms this time. I'm just gonna go with the very first and the very last. Um, and then notice that, uh, so that's, that's what's left after we kill off the purples. Um, but then notice that this is equal to A1, M1, uh, this one to the uh, M, uh, oh, oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay, if we... Look at what's left from the, oh, I sort of botched this here. Um, I, I forgot that we have this, this N applied to it. So this term here looks like A10NU1. And in particular, there's, there's no term in here without an N attached to it, which means actually that each one of these terms lives in star V. And so what are these guys? Um, I'm regretting my decision to actually write this down in notation. I should have been like the uh, book and been a coward and just like not done it now it's so ugly okay and all those exponents uh, are non-negative because there's at least an n in every single one of them right okay but then you see that we have a dependence relation so this is a uh, dependence relation on the v basis but that was a basis so then that means that all these a, j, k are equal to zero. And so which ones are those? Well, those are all the ones except for the topmost ones. So in other words, what survives from this equation right here is only these things that got killed back in the first round. So,
the original dependence relation um, becomes a one m one uh, plus one n to the m1 plus 1 u1 and the only things appearing here are things to the power mk plus 1 right okay and so then from uh, this other relation here we can say, oh, well, then that means actually that these, this is also, this is now a dependence relation in star V again. Um, because I can rewrite it as a one M one plus one uh, and then that's n to the m1 v1 oh this is just brutal and so all of these ajk's equal zero here and so that proves that all the AJKs are equal to zero. And so we have independence. Okay. Whew. So so it extends to a basis. And we'll call the basis um, what if not star w so this is a basis for all of v and so we'll call it star w and star w looks like good lord um let me just check my superscripts here yeah so we've got n m1 plus 1 u1 all the way down to n m uh n u1 U1. So there's our first tranche. Whole bunch of tranches. I like tranche. It's a great word. I don't even know what it means. Something about swaths of money, I think. But anyway. Um, UN all the way down. Okay, so N to the uh, 1 UN UN. Okay. And so now we extend it with W's. So we've got W1, W2, up to WP because why not? Okay, so that's supposed to be our basis for all of V. Okay, so then what do we have? So then N times WK is in the range of N because look, it's got an N in front of it, right? Okay, but we know that the range of N is the span of uh, uh, star V by definition um, that's how we got star V in the first place and so then by our little uh, green equation with the stars up above we know that this is the span of N of the U basis right and that's N of the span and that's just by linearity of, of N right because a linear combination of images of n is the image under n of a linear combination by linearity um okay and so that tells us then that um since nwk is in the image of n then that means that we have um there's some x in span u right here such that when you apply n to it you get nwk so nxk equals nwk all right so now what can we do with this 
We're almost there, folks. We're almost there. Hold on. I should have warned you to buckle your seatbelt before this proof. It's a bit of a rough one. So define u n plus k to be now w k minus x k so that when you apply n to it, you've got um, 0, right? Because these things equal each other when you uh, apply n to them. So when you apply n to the difference, uh, then there you have thing minus thing equals 0. OK. So this, by the way, satisfies uh, B, part B of the requirement. Yeah. OK. And so now the claim is that our basis um, is this thing. So that's that's the claim that this is the required basis, um, but but we're done, we're there, man, and and so let's see. So we've got um, from at this part here, we know that x k is in the span of star u here that I've just underlined. Oh, sorry, I guess. There we go. Okay, now that I've just underlined. Um, and then we know that um, xk plus un plus k is equal to wk. So now we know that this collection of uh, vectors that we have, uh, its span contains the basis that we extended to before. Because remember, this thing here is a basis because we extended to it. Um, and this thing is uh, contained now in this span. So I should just write that down. Um, so this thing so it spans V because um, Um, <clears throat> let's see, it contains star u and its span contains each wk. Um, and, uh, or oh, sorry, let's, let's say each xk and each un plus k, hence each wk. And so now we have um, that it is a basis since it's a spanning set with the right number of elements. So it has the right number of elements as um, basis star w. And we're done. Oh, thank god.